Neka's frustration grew into hatred. She stopped talking to Amaka and often mocked her. She would say things like, you have ruled my life with your ugly skinny body. Amaka would cry and cry, feeling more alone and unloved than ever. The pain became too much and unbearable for Amaka. She tried to find ways to escape her sadness. She even thought about ending her life, but something always stopped her. One day, she decided she couldn't stay in the house any longer. She ran away and started living on the street. Once upon a time, in a small village located in Africa, there lived a man named Chike. Chike and Adeze were hard-working farmers, known throughout the local village for their bountiful harvest. They had a large farm where they cultivate cassava, corn, and fruit. Every four market days, Chike and Adeze would take their cassava, corn, and fruits to the big market in the center of the village. They had a large store there where villagers would come to buy their fresh products. For seven long years, Chike and Adeze hoped and prayed for a child. They longed to hear the laughter of a baby in their home and to have someone to carry on their family occasion. They have been to so many places to get solution, but nothing works for them. One fateful day, Adeze's mother came visiting, and she told Adeze about Nwakego, who is living in a faraway village. She was known for her traditional way of peeling people and mixing herbs for people who are looking for the fruit of their womb. Mama Adeze took her daughter to Nwakego. She mixed different herbs for her to be taken on a daily basis with her husband. Adeze was grateful. After three months of taking the halves, one joyous day, their prayers were answered. Neka found out that she was going to have a baby, and not just one baby, but two. Nine months later, Chike and her wife were working on the farm one cool evening when Adeze started feeling pains on her stomach. Chike rushed her to one local maternity near the village market, and the midwife confirmed that she was in labor. She had a set of twins, and she was very happy. The whole village celebrated with Chike and Adeze when their twins girls were born. They named the twins Neka and Amaka. Neka was the older twin and she was big and stronger. Amaka was smaller and more delicate. Even though they ate the same time, the same food, and were cared for at the same hour, Neka grew bigger and taller while Amaka remained small and skinny. The years passed, the difference between the twins became more noticeable. Neka was tall, strong, and beautiful. She had a warm smile and a kind heart. Amaka, on the other hand, was still skinny and tall, no atom of flesh on her skin. She looked almost like a skeleton. The villagers began to talk about the twins. Some said that Neka had sucked all the strength from Amaka while they were in the mother's womb, leaving Amaka weak and small. This talk made Amaka very sad. She started to avoid going to the market with her parents because people would always stare at her and make rude jokes. They would call her names and say hurtful things. It broke Amaka's heart and she began to feel very unhappy. She wondered why she had to be different from her sister. Despite Amaka's body stature, Neka loves her so much and they do everything together. Amaka was learning how to sew clothes while Neka was learning how to sell goods in wholesale price. They were all happy with the trade they are learning. Every Saturday, Neka and Amaka would go to the farm to help their parents out. Neka, who loved her sister deeply, started to develop feelings of anger and frustration towards Amaka. She blamed Amaka for her own problem because every time a suitor came to ask for Neka's hand in marriage, they would leave as soon as they sight Amaka. The suitors were afraid that if they married Neka, their children might look like Amaka. This made Neka very upset. She started to say deceitful things to Amaka, blaming her for ruling her chances of getting married. Amaka stopped going out because of the way people make mockery of her. She would lock up herself and cry, blaming her parents and everyone around her. One fateful day, a wealthy young man named Obina came to the village. He was standing under the mango tree pressing his foot. He saw Neka while she was coming back from the stream and fell in love with her beauty and kindness. He decided to ask for her hand in marriage. But when Obina came to Chike and Adeze's house and saw Amaka, he changed his mind. He was afraid that marrying Neka might mean having children who look like Amaka. 
He left without saying a word and Nneka's heart broke. This pattern continued. Suitors would come for Nneka, but they would leave as soon as they saw Amaka. Nneka's frustration grew into hatred. She stopped talking to Amaka and often mocked her. She would say things like, you have ruled my life with your ugly skinny body. Amaka would cry and cry, feeling more alone and unloved than ever. The pain became too much and unbearable for Amaka. She tried to find ways to escape her sadness. She even thought about ending her life, but something always stopped her. One day, she decided she couldn't stay in the house any longer. She ran away and started living on the streets. One fateful day, a young man named Chibeze, who was also from a wealthy family, saw Amaka. He didn't see her skinny body or her appearance. He saw her kind heart and gentle spirit. Chibeze fell in love with Amaka and asked her to marry him. Amaka was surprised but very happy. She agreed and Chibeze went to her parents' house to pay the bride price. The villagers were in shock. They couldn't believe that someone as handsome as Chibeze would choose Amaka as a wife. But Chibeze didn't care about what people said. He loved Amaka for who she was and that was all that mattered to him. After a year of marriage, Amaka and Chibeze were blessed with a set of beautiful twins. Their children were healthy and grew normal. Amaka's happiness knew no bounds. During the traditional celebration called Omugo, when a new mother is scared and pampered, something miraculous happened. Amaka's body began to change. She became stronger and healthier. She started to gain weight and soon looked just as big as her sister Nneka. However, Nneka was still unmarried and feeling very lonely. She decided to visit her sister. She was amazed at how much Amaka had changed. Nneka felt a deep of regret for all the hurtful things she had said and done to her sister. With tears in her eyes, she asked Amaka to forgive her. Amaka, who had always loved her sister despite everything, forgave her. She invited Nneka to live with her and help with the family business. From that day on, Nneka and Amaka worked together in harmony. Nneka never married, but she found joy and fulfillment in helping her sister and caring for her niece and nephews. The villagers who had once mocked Amaka now admired her strength and beauty. They saw how her love and kindness had transformed her life and the lives of those around her. And so Nneka and Amaka lived happily, supporting each other and showing love to everyone that comes around them. Nneka grew older as time passed and she was no longer looking appealing and beautiful like before. So thus we are no longer coming for her or asking for her hand in marriage. This made her more sad and she began to envy her twin sister Amaka. She thought of how to get rid of her twin sister so she can take over her family. One day, while Amaka was in the shop attending and selling goods to customers, Nneka was at home preparing dinner for the entire family with her heart full of envy and evil. It's 6 p.m. already and everyone seated on the mat in front of their hut to have dinner. Nneka was inside, plotting her evil plans to wipe the entire family away. While she was busy adding a deadly substance into the food, she didn't know that her twin sister was behind her. Immediately, Amaka noticed what she was doing. She was shocked and dumbfounded. Amaka ran to her husband and reported the matter to him. He couldn't believe it. They waited for Nneka to serve the food. Nneka came out from the kitchen with a warm smile, carrying the pot of food in her hands. She dished out without dishing any portion for herself. Amaka comforted her and asked her, What of your own portion? She said she wasn't hungry. Amaka forced Nneka to taste the food, but she refused. Amaka's husband called the village elders and reported the case. The elders and the king summoned Nneka to find out what happened. She confessed immediately the table the matter to the oracle. Nneka was banished from the village while Amaka and her husband lived happily forever.